This looks like an ultralight storm wiggle wart. Son, I have never, ever seen one of those. Woo! That thing is tiny but tasty. Holy mackerel. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Hope everybody is doing well out there in Retro Bassin land. Uh, on this episode of Retro Bassin, we're going to be going through some mail to look at some old school gold that I got from a few of the Bassin buds, as well as do a little Retro Bassin giveaway. It's been a hot minute since we did a giveaway, so we're going to do one of those for some lures and decals at the end of the video, so stick around for that. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past. Well, stick around, consider subscribing, and just be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know when we post a new video like this one. All right, we got a pretty big package here. It comes to us from uh, Robert in Fortuna, California. Ho, ho, ho. Quite a, quite a tape job here. <laughs> Let's see what we've got here from California, which ironically enough is where I'm heading tomorrow. I'm heading back to uh, the West Coast, this time to Los Angeles for a couple days. Whew. Holy mackerel. Oh wow, there is an insane amount of old school gold in here. Holy cow. Um, so yeah, Robert, uh, Waddell from Fortuna, California. Holy mackerel, dude. I think you hooked me up with some old school magic. Uh, first things first, I see an old school Lure Jensen Hot Shot. This is a really cool crankbait. Mostly I think used for salmon and a lot of the trollers use it. But I've never actually seen this, which looks like to me a, it says size 50. Looks like an eighth ounce casting version of this thing. And a little nice classic all silver. Oof, look at that. Man, I could totally throw that on a little spinning rod and do some damage on some little creeks around here. Lubra plate fishing reel lubricant. Okay, look at this. Looks like some sort of tube of lube. I can't believe I just said that. Anyway, looks like a tube of lube. <laughs> for your fishing reel. <laughs> and there she is, looks like uh, a little bit of the old lube has been, uh, well, well used. Ooh, something old from Berkeley, the three pack with free handy fly box. The not a knotless tapered nylon leaders. Well, I don't do a ton of fly fishing, but Oh, I'm a sucker for anything old Berkeley. I love that old heart logo that they used to have back in the day, and that is really cool. Ah, let's see if this thing opens up. Ooh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, that is awesome. Nice. Well, if I ever get into retro fly fishing, I'll uh, know where to start. I can tell this one's from Cotton Cordell. It's the old school classic clear and red hard case that a lot of that stuff came in that I'm kind of starting to recognize a little bit these days. Yeah, and there's a nice crazy shad. There is the insert for this bait, sort of their version of, I guess like the head and torpedo, but it's got a dual prop on it. 
Oof, look at that bait. Ooh, that's a really good looking color too. That is nice. I don't know if you can pick that up, but it's got like a nice gray, sort of a translucent midsection and nice white belly. Wow, okay, that is awesome. Thank you, and uh, that's gonna be a caster for sure. A nice little micro buzz here. Look at this. Who makes this? I don't even know, but it's a little mini clear buzz bait with a nice flat, and it looks like sort of like a little metal head. That's definitely old school. Nice, by the way, living rubber skirt on it. Woof, man. That thing is probably pond magic right there. Oh, wow, awesome. What is this? A nice Warden's Rooster Tail Spinner. Classic, what size is this? Looks like a, maybe a 16th ounce. Um, yeah, that might be, is that? Oh, an eighth of an ounce. Couldn't see with the glare. I like that little Will Leaf style blade they have on there and I always love the Rooster Tail skirts. They flare out really, really nicely. Having just watched Jay Worth time me up some jigs, now I know how hard even doing that little bit of <laughs> feather tail is. But I love how flared that is. That really does sort of stand out in the water. So that's an awesome little bait. Uh, here's another Hot Shot 60. I think this one's even smaller than the other one in a classic frog pattern. Oh, wow. So if that other one was an eighth of an ounce, this one might be even less. That's a teeny tiny little Lord Jensen hot shot. Let's compare that to the other one here, side by side. So we've got the size 50 and the 60 right there. True turn hooks, size 10. Man, I remember there was a time when phew, I wouldn't throw a worm if it was not on a true turn hook. Probably been a while since I've actually fished a true turn hook, but man, that thing used to be awesome. Here's sort of the deal of how it works. It's got a little offset bend in the shank, and in theory, when a fish hits it, that hook rotates so that the barb ends up pointing upward toward the roof of the mouth, thus hopefully improving hookup ratios. Ooh, a little Z-Ray spoon from Whitman Lures. Oh, I've been seeing these in Cabela's lately, but I think this one is definitely uh, old school. No website on the back. And this is a nice little ultralight spoon. Definitely meant for casting, not trolling. Uh, by the size and profile of it, but I bet that sucker would catch a little bass in a little creek. Woo! Got some nice hooks here. Ho, ho, ho. What are these? Seahawk hooks. I don't know how many hooks are left in this thing. What is this? Huh. And where is this from? Norway. Okay, Seahawk hooks from Norway. I've never actually heard of that. But it says it's from the uh, Bruck Tackle Manufacturing in Portland, Oregon. Okay. So it is, let's see, the original uh, curve point, hooks by Mustad. Okay, so these must be Mustad hooks with a U.S.-based snail on there. Very cool. Love that packaging. Ooh, I think I see some nice Rebel stuff in here. Oh, looks like I've got three Rebel crawfish in the floater diver. Look at those little guys. Oh, it's funny, but I've actually got some Rebel creatures rigged up on my ultralight rod, both the big ant and the caddercrawler and the crick hopper. I don't have one of these tied on. I'm working on a Rebel Terrestrials episode. So 
Man, I might have to crack up one of these and add it to the mix. That is a nice, neat looking little crankbait. I've fished the Rebel Crawfish before, but never in this small size. I think I fished the one either a size or two up, but never this one, which is clearly, I think, probably what, the eighth ounce version of it. I bet those crawfish are actually kind of that color this time of year. So I think that's it. <laughs> that's not it. Oh my goodness. There is even more, holy mackerel. Wow, there's a lot of old school gold in here. So what is this? Um, accessories, an old Bass Pro Shops logo, but there's a crankbait in here and I don't think that crankbait originally came in this package. Just a hunch. Ooh, another hot shot. That's a bigger one, look at that. I like these guys just came with a single hook. It's not a huge crankbait, so it kind of makes sense, but I always hate sometimes when the smaller crankbaits, my front hook and my rear hook tend to foul up a little bit. So this is nice, and that's a little deep diver too, isn't it? Nice little chrome blue and red, whew. Ooh, this is a not very big, big O. I think that's like the micro eighth ounce version of this. And man, that is a size of Big O that I do not have. Ooh, a nice little Smoky Joe color. It's missing a hook, but I could probably get that added without too much trouble. Man, my ultralight box is going to be stacked after this one. Another Bass Pro package, which I'm going to save. And we've got another little crankbait in here. This thing looks like a Rebel, we'll say. Oh, it is a Rebel, and man, that's a tough color. A Rebel Naturalized We Are. I think that's a We Are. Maybe a deep We Are. In a nice, ooh, tasty looking shad pattern. Wow. Oh man, it is Crankbait City over here. <laughs> I love the crankbaits, but I just love this old school Bass Pro Shops accessory bag. Those are awesome, and I'm actually totally gonna keep these and maybe throw some swivels in those. That is nice. Ooh, whoa. This looks like an ultralight storm wiggle wart. Son, I have never, ever seen one of those. Ooh. That thing is tiny but tasty. Holy mackerel. Wow. Oh, look at that nice. It's got a nice chrome and orange back to it. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Oh, what? Another mini storm wiggle wart. Oh, wow. So that's a whole nother size. So I didn't realize there were that many sizes of wiggle warts. But check it out. This is definitely a size down from the version that I normally fish. And this one's a size down from that. Oh, look at those. Wow. And you can totally tell that's a pre wrap low wiggle wart. Look at that lip. That thing is all crooked. Crooked and catchy. H&H &H Coastal Tackle. Looks like this is the old H&H &H Beetle. Another lore company that I actually am going to feature on Retro Bassin rather soon. I've been throwing the classic H&H &H spinner a pretty good bit lately, and we're putting together a little H&H &H episode, so that is really cool that I got this. The company, of course, still based in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Nice. 
Ooh, these look like original Bobby Garland's bass tubes. Oh, yeah, look at that old school tube action. Looks like a nice little three inch tube in whew, a really nice natural color there too. I don't know what that's called, I'll have to look at that later. But man, I've got one, two packs of those guys. Woohoo! And that one's nice sparkle. Look at that. Oh. oh, I see a little, is that, oh my goodness, a jitterbug. Noisy action kills bass. The old jitterbug. What is this jitterbug? Oh man. Hooking me up with some ultralight awesomeness. Look at that little thing. I don't think I've got a jitterbug that small in a nice classic perch pattern. And definitely a size they do not make anymore in the old Fred Arborgast jitterbug. They still make those, but they're down to kind of like one size these days. <laughs> that is awesome. Ooh, classic Mr. Twister. Twister tail worms. That looks like a looks like a nice little phenom going on there. Not quite the woo worm with the holes in it uh, to catch air, but this I think was the predecessor to the Mr. Twister woo worm. Zeke's trout bait. Oh, I know they still make Zeke's today, but not with that logo. Look at that. Oh man, that is beautiful. Nice directions on the side. Oh man. I might have to add that to the old Uncle Josh display, even though this isn't Uncle Josh. That is still pretty cool. <laughs> Should I, should I test it? Ooh, cheese. Like 1970s cheese. You get another crankbait in here, oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Ooh, another one from Storm, but not a wiggle wart. This one is the old hot and tot. Looks like a maybe quarter ounce hot and tot in a chrome red. A couple things that are very unique to me about this crankbait. One, it's the shape. Most crankbaits, notice they're fatter at the head. This one's fatter right in the midsection. It's also got that nice metal lip with eh, the old school, almost saltwater snap. A lot of the old metal lips came with this snap. And I don't know if this is just better suited for trolling, but that's a good looking old school crankbait. Okay. Let me know if you know what this bait is. In three, two, this is one from that, I wouldn't say it's a generic, but it's definitely was sort of like bottom shelf crankbaits in the 1980s, 90s, known as the producers. But they have one bait that is actually quite hard to find these days, and when you do, you spend a few bucks on it, and it's this one. It's called Willie's Worm. I've been looking for one of these out of the package for a while. I've got some in the package that I'm not gonna open up to fish, but this one is totally gonna to be a caster, and I'm really curious to see if there's a reason for the eBay hype about this little bait. At first glance, it's pretty solid. It's got a really fine rattle in it. Sort of an interesting uh, little carve out on either side where they put this prism tape. The lip itself, that's a pretty wide lip. And again, a couple of little carve out areas with some prison tape. Interesting little crankbait, the producer's Willie's Worm. And that one is totally gonna go in the old crankbait tackle box. 
sooner than later. Lures, lures, make your own. Make your own lures, and there's a, like five nice little, that looks like a, a wobble right spoon in there. Oh, wow. Those are heavy little spoons. That is too cool. Yeah, there's like one, two, three, four, five spoons in this tiny little really heavy package. Huck Finn Hooks. I have never heard of Huck Finn Hooks. But I guess it makes sense. Huck Finn was a pretty good fisherman back in the day, so I guess it's just about time for him to get sponsored. I don't know anything about these hooks. I've never seen these before. Uh, I'll have to do a little bit more research on this, but that is quite interesting. And these were sold for <laughs> nine cents a pack at the old Value Giant. <laughs> Value Giant? I don't know. But at those prices, I need to find out where that is. All right, we're getting to the bottom of the barrel here. Uh, another pack of make your own spoons. This time, these look like they're gold. Woof! Amazing. Spike it, dip, and glow. It is easy. And oh, it looks old. Blade dip. I've never actually heard of blade dip before, but I mean, I guess they've got dip for everything else, right? You've got a dip for your worm. Why not a dip for your spinnerbait blade? And I guess if you want to turn a blade pink, that would be the way to do it. I have no idea how that would even work or how that would stay on. Here's another uh, blade dip in fire red. <laughs> And one more in chartreuse. Well, if I was gonna open these, I'd let you know how they work, but I don't know. That package is so glorious, I think that might just be a collector, not a caster, huh? <laughs> not that you cast dip, but you know what I mean. Robert, thanks again, buddy, for the awesome package of old school gold. I'm gonna be incorporating some of it in the display behind me, as well as getting a few things souped up for some on the water retro bass and adventures. So back to the uh, giveaway that we we're talking about at the beginning of the video. It's been a hot minute since we've done a giveaway on retro bass and so today we're gonna give away two of these retro bass and decals or slaps as the cool kids call them. As well as a pair of Jensen extractors courtesy of Jensen Fish and Tackle, and some Austin Deer in about 1960. So the way to register for this competition is go ahead and drop a comment down below. Just let me know which lure you would like me to look at the history of next. We kind of been doing a little bit of this deep dive into the origins of some different lures. I think we did the Flood Minnow, we did the Hair Jig, so let me know what kind of old school bait is on the radar for you. And I will pick a winner at random, maybe for next Saturday's video, and I'll drop the winner down below. Until next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up, and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass.